honesty in our relationship with Baba. We have all the relationships with Baba. We enjoy every relationship. And not only that, the enjoyment is on the basis of my honesty of that relationship. So when I am honest with Baba, in my relationships with Baba, then definitely I'm set to be, yes. Each and every relationship, not any relationship missing with Baba. And I'm experiencing the fulfillment of that relationship. We are like when we be honest in that relationship, there's nothing that we hide from Baba. As Baba many times mentions in the Murli, if you hide something from the surgeon, you're just going to increase that disease, that's all. So he who is huh, at loss, we are at loss. So whatever has happened, if I'm honest in my relationship with Baba, there is nothing that can disturb me. Whatever Baba's teachings are, or Srimat is, for that relationship, I just accept it. Not that some Srimat I accept and some Srimat I am lose. Okay, chalta hai, hota hai, no. We can not take it for granted. Doesn't matter. Baba knows everything. Baba says, what is your honesty to say out to Baba? Although Baba knows, but we need to tell Baba. That is my honesty. And then only I'll be able to experience all the relationship to its fullness to the full extent, and take that happiness. But just as in the world, sometimes people take it for granted. Doesn't matter, they know, Baba knows, no? Baba knows. Once I'm remem reminded that once a Sandeshi went to Baba in trance and Baba asked her, so what is going on in your world nowadays? And she said, Baba, you know everything, no? And Baba immediately corrected her. Although I know, but your honesty is to speak whatever I have asked you. Baba was official. And she said that was the first time she saw Baba's official form. And that is when, if I am not honest in my relationships with Baba, then definitely. There is something that is not allowing me to come close to Baba. Some sanskar. So I need to clear out that sanskar very fast. It is easy for me to clear out. And the moment I clear out that sanskar, which is becoming an obstacle. In the world also we find, why are there relationship, relationship problems? 
because the honesty is not there. And that is why taken for granted. Oh, what if I didn't say this to you? What is the big issue? And that causes a lot of issues. And then there is no closeness. People start separating. So this is what happens. If I am not honest with Baba, in my different relationships, in sustaining those different relationships, then Maya takes the chance to come in between and makes us move apart. Which Baba normally says, Sunanti, Kathanti, Bhaganti. Finally, they divorce Baba from their lives. Why? Because that honesty is not there in that relationship with Baba. Whichever relationship, any one of the relationship also, if I'm not true in that relationship, then gradually I'm moving apart from Baba. That is for sure. So that is also one sort of purity. The fourth purity, we've come to the number four. The fourth purity is always said, Yogi bano pavitra bano, or pavitra bano yogi bano. Be pure, be yogi. This is the slogan that we have. Until and unless I do not have these purities, I can't be a yogi. I cannot have yoga with Baba. If I have these complaints, what can I do? I can't huh, remember Baba. Or Baba's remembrance is not there. Always check. Is there some sort of impurity? Some sort of impurity. Impurity in thoughts or impurity in my actions, in my interactions, in my feelings. Somewhere the impurity is there, which is not allowing me to connect to Baba. Be pure, be yogi. Yoga can only be there when there is purity. And it is not the physical purity, but the subtle level of purity. The intellect is not being divinized. That is why it is not able to connect. And that is why I cannot receive the powers. There is some sort of impurity that is there in my life. I need to check myself at a subtle level because then only I'll be able to have yoga with Baba. Otherwise, there is no yoga. My yoga of intellect will be broken again and again and again and again. The consistency will not be there. So, see which sanskar, which impure sanskar is still fiddling with me. And then only, if I remove that, become aware of it and remove that, that is why Baba says, always keep this in your awareness. Without purity, there cannot be yoga. <clears throat> be pure, be holy, be yogi. Be holy, be yogi. That is our slogan. And especially the intellect. 
has to be divinized so much. When I have a divine intellect and my yoga starts becoming constant with Baba, many a times we hear Baba's murli on holy. And Baba always shows us three meanings of holy. Becoming holy, then past is past. If I'm holding on to any past, that is also impurity. And the third is uh, holia, we surrender ourselves, holia. And then Baba talks about having a swan intellect, holy intellect. Normally, on holy festival, Baba says this, you have to have a holy intellect, a swan intellect. And the swan intellect means very pure, which is able to differentiate. Neer and kshir means water and milk, separate. Pearls and stones, easily able to differentiate and only imbibe that which is pure. So that is the divinization of the intellect, making the intellect so wholly pure. So be holy, be yogi. And that is why our first dharna, we start at the physical level and then go towards the subtle levels. Then the fifth form of purity <clears throat> is when we are not just brahmachari, celibate, but brahmachari. Putting our footsteps in the footsteps of Brahma Baba. That is, following each and every Srimat as it is. No twisting of Srimat on the basis of our conveniences. The moment I start twisting Srimat, trying to find another meaning, and according to my conveniences, oh, Baba have given this Srimat, but who was it for? Like when, whenever Baba said that, for the military people who had to eat their food in the mesh. And Baba gave them the Srimat. You can give Trishti. Remember Baba. And then you can have your food. But that was for the military people. But normal Brahmins also, oh, Baba said this no, in the Murli. We can also give drishti and eat the fruit, food, whatever it is. So, twisting the Srimat according to our conveniences, I can do this. There is no problem. Baba has said this. So, people in the world also then try to test you. How much you are able to stay on your Srimat? How much you are able to put your footsteps in the footsteps of Brahma Baba? Because many people know what knowledge says. And they know our principles regarding food, regarding company and everything. That is the purity. Regarding food, 
Baba has always said you have to have sattvic food, pure food. Sometimes people test also by saying, well, you have been yogis all these years. Can't you purify your food? <laughs> then what is the use of you doing yoga all these years? And that is when some Brahmins also feel, yes, we can. And they accept the challenge. We can take, we can give drishti and have food, no problem. We have that much of power, self-control, self-discipline. But this was a trap. This was a trap. It reminds me of, a, of an incident. There was one brother who was in a big company. And he was in the board level. So he had to many a times go for board meetings. And from various places, the people on the board, they used to come because the company had its branches in many parts of India. So whenever they had annual meeting or you know, six months monthly meet meeting or three months meeting, they all used to gather at the headquarters and they all used to go there. Now this Baba's child, although he was on the board, but he used to take his tiffin with him. He never used to eat the food there, although maybe it was salad or just rice or this or that, nothing. He did not compromise with the principles. He would get his tiffin made from home he would take that tiffin and he had no body consciousness in that. What will people say? Initially, people laughed. But then gradually they accepted, well, it is his disciplines. So he would bring his tiffin and he would eat that tiffin only in sitting in one corner. And they will all go into the a restaurant, wherever the meeting is, and they used to enjoy the food, everyone. And this brother would sit in one corner and he would eat his tiffin. Everybody accepted. Well, he has his own disciplines, let him have his own food. Sometimes they mocked at him, they laughed at him, made jokes on him, but he had nothing to, he didn't care about it said, why should I care? I'm not doing anything wrong. It is my way of life. And I'm going to have my own tiffin. Gradually, when people accepted it, now it happened so that there was some big problem in the um, company. In money. And everybody started pointing out to this man, Baba's child. He has done all this, you know, he has taken some money. And he had no proofs to prove that he was not even involved in this and he doesn't know about it. He has nothing to say on his side. So the CEO of the company was looking at his face. He was remembering Baba. He was very peaceful. He was remembering Baba. Baba, you know the truth. And nowhere I'm involved. in this corruption. And nobody knew who did that corruption of hundreds and millions of rupees. So when people pointed out the finger at him, the CEO of the company was watching him. And he was listening to everybody's 
reactions coming. Finally, he said, Do you have to say anything? He asked Baba's child, Do you have to say anything? So he said, No. Because I don't know anything about it. So I, I don't know what to say. I have nothing to say. So then the CEO said in the big gathering, he said, this person doesn't eat the food that we serve here. He brings his own tiffin. How can he eat the money? He doesn't eat our food. He doesn't drink our tea that is served here. And how can he eat the money? And the whole blame just came out from him. And he said, I think today Baba's discipline on having your own food saved me. Saved me. Otherwise, I had nowhere to prove myself that I did not, I, I'm not at all involved in this corruption, corruption of money. But my discipline saved me. And the CEO says, and that is a very big compliment for Baba's child in the huge gathering of board meeting in that big company, that this person, he does not eat our food served here. He has no greed to eat and drink the tea also. He doesn't drink the tea served here. How can he eat the money? And Baba saved him. It was as if just the, huh? the hair coming out from the butter. Was saved. He said, I just could not imagine how Baba saved me from this. And the CEO complimenting in front of everyone. And everyone was silent. They couldn't speak. How one principle saves him from everything. And Brahmins, sometimes we become so body conscious. I'm not going to take this tiffin in that gathering. I'll eat salads or I'll eat something. I'll do, take the fruits. I'll take the juice. I'll do this. I'll do that. This is what we sometimes compromise. And there is body conscious. What will people say? People will laugh at me. What will, it is better to fast the whole day than to take this stiffen. But this brother was so peaceful and he was thanking Baba. Baba, you saved me from such a big, big test. And it was your discipline that saved me from this test. Sometimes I feel all the disciplines that Baba has given to the Brahmins. Sometimes Brahmins think, why did Baba give us so much of pain, you know? With these disciplines, it is so hard to follow sometimes. But the more we are huh, like firm on those, on those disciplines, then we can see the results. How it helps us in our lives. Baba has not given the disciplines only just to hmm, give trouble to the children. No. There is a significance behind each and every discipline. There is a significance. And Baba has mentioned, in the end, you will see the benefit of these disciplines 
and you'll realize the significance why Baba has given us this discipline. And what benefit we receive by following those disciplines, whether it is getting up at Amrit Vela, whether it is regularly going for the Murli class, whether it is eating disciplines, drinking disciplines, whether it is company discipline, what type of company do we choose? As it is always said, as is the company, so will be the person. A man is known by the company he keeps. Jaisa sang, vaisa rang. People will start evaluating you. On the basis of that company, we may feel, okay, I'm going to improve this person. But instead of improving, see that you do not put a spot on your character. You do not you know, bring that dirt in your character. And people also start visualizing you on the basis of that company. So we have to be very cautious on the company we choose. We have to be very particular. All these disciplines has always given benefit to people. Many a times Baba says, these, are ba these badges are medals, you know? And you always have to keep this medal on you. But many body conscious Brahmins think, no, oh, it's, it's not worth. People may laugh at us. But instead of caring what people may say, sometimes these badges become your shields and they protect you from the biggest problem also. Seeing the badge, it helps you in every way. Some people come and approach you. Oh, this person who goes in Om Shanti, we trust this person without knowing you. We put a trust on you. It always, always changes the vision of people towards us. So, everyone knows the disciplines of BKs. Why should I be body conscious in following those disciplines? 